So I think, I think it's going live, Lyra. We've got uh, Mork the Cat uh, and Lyra uh, here with me today. Um, and we may not have many of you joining us, but we thought that while we were uh, testing out Facebook Live, yeah. uh, you said you were up for giving us a go with me, didn't yeah. you? So we uh, thought we would have a bit of a chat about school-based anxiety, which yeah. is something you know a thing or two about. How come? Yeah, uh, because when at the start of year five, then I was very unhappy about going to school and I would uh, I would purposefully stay home at school and I would try and I would lean against my door so that dad and mum couldn't come in to try and get me up for school and stuff because I was really unhappy and I didn't want to go in um, and I became very anxious about going into school because I didn't go so and something that mum has taught me because there's other things that I've been anxious about not necessarily to do with school but other things and mum says always to me if you don't do it then you're just going to get more anxious about doing it when you next have to do it and so it just got worse and worse and worse and I uh, in the end because it started off with me just being very unhappy at school and then in the end it became with me not wanting to go to school and it it being a very kind of upsetting time to manage with like in the mornings um and it became quite a lot to handle hmm. yeah um that was we didn't prepare this at all I was very thank you for sharing that I was yeah and I, one thing I'm interested there so um you were saying how I've taught you since because I don't think we necessarily quite got to grips with what was yeah. happening right away yeah. um but I've taught you since about how when we're anxious or worried or scared about something that actually often we need to keep trying to do that yeah, thing or else yeah. it gets worse do you understand why that is or do you want me to explain that uh, I don't really understand why it is, but it does work. Yes, and that's the most important thing is that it works. But just to help you understand why it is that if we're worried or we're anxious about something, why we need to keep trying to do it um, is actually because basically when we're worried, our brain goes into what's called fight, flight, freeze, which is, you know, if we had a tiger or a bear running towards us, um, it's what would help us to respond to that situation. So we're scared about the bear um, and so we need to be ready to fight it or, or to flee from it basically so our brain gets yeah. all ready to do that um, and what happens is that we get very very worried about certain things and we build them up like the bear and we worry about them and if we go and we engage with the situation we go and do the thing that worries us yeah and we find that it's fine or at least kind of okay and we manage it then we tell our brain that it's okay you don't need to run away from that however if we don't go and do that thing, then our brain kind of assumes that the worst would have happened. So our brain kind of, every time we're thinking about the thing we're scared of, goes into that fight, flight, freeze, ah, response. Yeah. So if you're scared of school, if you go and you find that school's kind of okay, then the next time you're slightly less scared of it. But if you don't go, then your brain goes, oh, well, if you'd have gone, it would have been terrible. And that would yeah, be yeah. if that makes sense. But that's really hard when you're scared about going in. Yeah. So we had to think really carefully, didn't we, about how could we help you to go to school? Yeah. Because it's fair to say you really, really didn't want to go, yeah. did you? No. And that didn't just start on the morning of school. That sometimes started like on a Sunday afternoon, say yeah. before Monday in particular, didn't it? And can you remember what helped there? I mean, obviously, ultimately, you ended up changing schools, but you yeah. did get to the point where you could go in, didn't you? Yeah, I think one of the things that really did help is having... Uh, the support team at school so that then when as soon as I walked in through the doors then I knew that I had somewhere that I could kind of get used to it almost yeah. before I had to go into the classroom um, and I would sit with my friends and I'd sometimes some of my friends would go um, and I would kind of talk and sit with them and just get myself almost prepared to go into the yeah. classroom. 
And that's really important. That's what um, I would refer to as a soft landing. So you're arriving at school, but you're not having to go straight in and do all the really tough stuff right away. You're actually going and getting yourself mentally prepared really for the rest of the day and taking a few minutes at the beginning of the day can often mean that then you're more able to do it and so we kind of got a bit of a routine going with that didn't we so you always went to the same people in the same place and what so what did you do when you got there so this was the kind of nurture zone wasn't it what uh, your school Learning learning zone that's it so what would you do there you had breakfast didn't you yeah so we would have um We'd have breakfast there, and then we would, uh, if there was something that was worrying us, we could either talk to one of the, uh, like, I would quite often talk to one of my friends who went there as well, Um, or there was um, some teachers who were there who, like, worked as the learning support team, and you could just go and talk to them if you had any worries and then they would try and help you talk through them and kind of make your worries less big worries yeah and then they and then you'd feel more ready to go into the classroom than if you hadn't have talked them through okay okay so you could tackle stuff before it kind of yeah 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 yeah. and was there a time limit on how long you could stay in the learning zone did you have to go to lessons at a certain point or was it just when you were ready um, well, they suggested if you're having a good day and you were ready to go in, then you went at the time when people came in and lessons started. Yeah. If you really weren't ready, then you would just stay in there until you were ready and you felt ready to go in and then you would go into lessons slowly. And I think some of the people who are watching this, so we're, for anyone who's just kind of joining us, this is my daughter Lyra, who is 10, uh, nearly 11, uh, (laughs) who uh, struggled with um, school-based anxiety and and school avoidance. Um, And we're just talking a bit about her experience there and how, when this was particularly difficult, that going to the learning zone when you arrived was really helpful. Um, And I seem to remember from that time, and you'll correct me if I'm wrong, that um, you built some quite good relationships with the, the people who worked in the learning zone, yeah, the staff yeah, there. Yeah. And, and lots of the people watching this will probably be the kinds of staff who work in those kinds of places. Yeah. So maybe can you tell me a bit about what it was that they did that was helpful? Why you kind of found you could get on with them? I think what I found helpful uh, was that you knew that, I mean, even if you were having a tough time, if you came into school and you were perfectly fine, went off to lessons and then you found that you were really anxious about actually being in there being in the classroom and actually you couldn't focus because you were so anxious Mm. that you could just go to them as long as the teacher knew where you were you could go to them and you could talk to them for as long as you wanted and then just come back in when you were ready and I think that's kind of having knowing that you could go there at any point yeah so you knew you could go to someone that you trusted yeah yeah and what about the kinds of things that they did with you or said to you was there anything because it seems like you quite you know you you really trusted them didn't you yeah i think um i think i trusted them just because i knew that they they wouldn't tell anyone unless they thought i was kind of that they that they actually needed to tell someone like if it was my worries then they wouldn't tell anyone mm. it was only kind of if i was in danger that they would tell anyone and i also went to place to be but and i think those sessions also really helped because i would go on a wednesday morning and that would help me come to school on in a wednesday you always um, wanted to go to school on wednesday didn't yeah. you because you really liked going to place yeah. to be yeah um and so I would I would happily go into school on Wednesdays and then if I was worried about how Monday or Tuesday or how Monday or Tuesday had gone then we could talk that through and if I was worried about coming into school on the other days then we could talk that through as well and I think just having that safe space kind of I, it was only Wednesday but on Wednesdays then I was very happy to come into school yeah which is really good that's really positive positive. and do you remember kind of how it all started it started by getting well so in year four i absolutely love my teacher and he's still my most favorite teacher that i've ever had 
Um, but uh, it start so I had him. I was really happy that I had him, and we got on really well. And then in year five, then I found out that I had a different teacher who I really didn't like, quite frankly. Um, and when we got told that that was the teacher that we had, then I was I I got quite upset. I think it's fair to say. Um, and I on the first day, like I'm normally really excited to go into school. I was excited because I was excited to see my friends, but I was also not very excited after meeting my teacher for the first time. Mm. But I think there must have been, I think it was a difficult time generally, wasn't it? So Mork's yeah. joining in here. Um, so we'd had a recently granddad who you were yeah. very close to had died. And there were, there, I think there was, there were lots of different things going on, weren't there? But the first mm. signs that we knew that anything wasn't quite right was that actually that I was getting calls from the headship team that you were being naughty. Yeah. Um, and I remember you recently um, spoke at a conference that I was talking at. Yeah. You gave the closing, uh, closing remarks um, and you, what you said to everyone um, was about how you need, they needed to give children the opportunity to show their problems other than being naughty. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, because I felt that the only way that I could be heard was by being naughty, because then everyone would know that I was being naughty, and then they'd try and, and, then they'd try and stop me from being naughty. And then I knew that I had their attention, so then I could speak to them about the actual problem. Yeah, which is, yeah, really, like, as a parent, when you said that, it, you know, it, that's hard to hear because obviously we'd missed stuff yeah. and we should have been doing something sooner, but perhaps you'd been kind of quietly getting on with it and trying. Um, and what do you think would have made that better? Like, how could you have been heard differently? What? I'm not really, I think, I think actually kind of, telling someone that if you do get anxious or if you do just need to go and speak to someone that there are other ways of doing it and kind of, of telling them mm. and kind of giving them those options of ways to so kind of get your point it. yeah yeah, yeah okay. get your point heard and you're at a new school now mm -hmm. since September and um, that school, it's been quite a different experience, hasn't it? So, yeah. and I don't, that's it, I think it's fair to say your old school did some, you know, you had some really wonderful times there, didn't yeah. you? And there's some bits yeah. about it that were great, but by the end it was time to, yeah. to change. But can you talk to me a little bit about your new school? Is there anything that they're doing that mean that you feel a little bit more confident about going in each day or? Um, I think it's, so we don't go kind of straight into the classroom and start with kind of all everyone everywhere kind of you start off in the playground and you get to see your friends first and then you can then you go into the classroom but it's not kind of you see your friends outside and then if you do need space like it's bigger outside than inside and if you need some space then you can just go off and have some space yeah and then it and then i i certainly don't feel anxious at all really except from on mondays because that's swimming but I that's don't, a different story yeah <laughs> <laughs> um but i don't feel anxious about going into the classroom at all and I think just knowing that you don't have to go straight into the classroom where everyone is. Mm. I think just knowing that you can kind of go off if you need some space. Yeah, and I think, so you only started in September. Yeah. Um, properly, because obviously we were in lockdown before that. Yeah. Um, but in that time, there's been maybe a couple of times, haven't there, yeah. where you've had a little wobble, which yeah. is fine. We all have moments yeah. like that. And and I I felt, as your mum, that um, the school responded to those moments really well. But I wondered what you thought about it. Yeah, because one of the times was that, well, Ellie was flying and she maybe hurt her foot by Matt bashing it on a metal pole um but yeah uh, ellie is lyra's sister there in the same year yeah school. um and then she had to go to the medical room and i was maybe slightly sad that i'd done it to her yeah completely by, by accident yeah because yeah. <laughs> we do this we do this well we 
did this quite often and it would be like our magic trick that Ellie could fly by her being swung round by me. Um, and then we did it in a maybe too small space and then she bashed her leg and then she had to go to the medical room and I got really worried and upset that I had done it to her and worried that she, what has she done to it? What have I, what did I do to her? Has she kind of, is it just a bruise or is it a break, you know? I didn't know kind of what it was. Um, and I have never been, I don't think I've ever really been in school without Ellie. No. And I get really anxious when I know that I don't have Ellie because I know that kind of sh I can... Like, we hate each other, but then we also love each other. Yeah. Because um, I know that, like, at break times, then I always have someone to play with. Um, but knowing that I possibly would, possibly wouldn't have her at that break time and that lunch time... Because I had to come and get her and yeah, take her to the yeah. hospital. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was kind of... It made me slightly worried. Just because I didn't know that if I was going to be on my own or if I was going to mm. have her there or what. Kind of... I don't like uncertainty. I like things to be <laughs> how they are every day. Yeah. Um, and... So you were worried about going to school um, the next day, weren't you? Yeah, um, because I was worried that people would ask me, why haven't you been in school yesterday? Because, well, Ellie was at the hospital that day and, you didn't until, go on your and own. I didn't want to go on my own. Yeah. And so uh, I was worried the day after that that people would ask me, like, why haven't you been in school? And they did ask me, why haven't you been in school? And I just decided to say that it's because um, Ellie had to go to the hospital until five o'clock in the afternoon mm. since three o'clock this morning. Um, and that in we terms didn't of, have the car. Yeah, which was all broadly true. Um, but the key thing there was that you didn't really, you were not feeling very confident about going back into school and you'd have your confidence no knocked a bit. And I think that that's an important thing to understand with this, isn't it? That yeah. even though you'd built your confidence up and actually you largely enjoy going to school and then you find you can manage that now, it can quite quickly if we don't respond fast. Yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah. It, it feels like it could unravel. But actually your teacher was really helpful that morning, yeah, wasn't she? Yeah, yeah. Because we... She, she came and met with us and the yeah. head teacher. And um, we kind of talked it through and we made it feel better because we didn't just talk about that, we talked about other things. So it wasn't yeah. kind of like, this is the problem, we're going to talk about this the whole time. Yeah. We kind of sorted it and then we talked about some other stuff, you know. Yeah, and I guess going back to your earlier point about needing to like people to hear you, I suppose that having your teacher and your head teacher come yeah. to meet you in the morning when I've said, you know, Lyra's having a hard day, yeah. can you help? Um, that maybe you feel a little bit more heard. Then, yeah, yeah. Um, which is helpful. And at your new school, if you're having, um, yeah, if you're having a, a difficult moment, what do you do now? How do you kind of manage those sort of ups and downs in the day? Is there anything that helps or is that still a work in progress? Um, well, first of all, I'll talk to Mrs. Rivers. Mm-hmm. Um, but if I still need, if I need kind of more time out and not just to talk to someone, then I'll use my time to see Miss Musgrove card and I'll go and see Miss Musgrove and then I'll just sit in with her in her room for a bit until I feel ready. And then I'll go back into the classroom. Um, and that's how I normally manage it. But sometimes it's a bit harder than that but that's how I generally manage it because I generally manage to get it quickly before it gets yeah. bigger yeah and I think that's important isn't it and I think yeah some days are hard aren't they yeah. we had one day where we'd had quite a difficult day so we went home by the vicarage and we had cuddles with the pug and chocolate from the vicar didn't we which yeah. uh, I think helps a little bit 
Um, yeah. Well, I think we've definitely tested this. I think it's working. Oh, look, we've got some nice comments on here. So Stuart says, such an inspirational young lady. And Joni says, is this available to watch again? I got to take mum shopping, but this is one of my SEN girls really, really want to watch this. Yes, I think it will stay available. Um, and Lucy says, thank you and well done for sharing. And yeah, thank you, Lyra. Um, it might be that another time we could do another chat and we can answer people's questions, but we yeah. mainly wanted to test it and see if it worked. Which yeah, I it does. Um, and I think that, you know, a, a couple of things I would want to add in at this point is as a parent and a professional um, that uh, knowing a lot about these things doesn't make your family immune to them, nor does it mean that you know exactly what to do. We're all having to learn uh, all the time and we're learning still, aren't yeah. we? Um, but the other thing I, I think I would say is that um, it's it's we've had to communicate really carefully yeah. and we've really had to stick with it haven't we and sometimes we've had to do things that don't feel nice so sometimes it has been about being really brave um and going and doing the thing anyway yeah, even though we're yeah. a bit scared but knowing that you know there's someone there who will meet us and greet us and support us when we get there yeah um, and I think that, you know, for any um, one working in school who's watching, a really important thing to understand is that for us parents or carers, this is really emotionally draining as well. So there would be days when it might have taken, you know, we might have been working from Sunday lunchtime to get Lyra into school on a Monday. Um, and that, you know, that Monday morning, we might have had three hours of of crying and yeah. worry and upset by the time that Lyra was onto school premises um, and so by that point as a parent you know you're completely emotionally drained because it's really upsetting when your child is, is worried and upset um, and so yeah for, for, for educators just remember that it's not only the child who needs support but actually um, we as parents and carers really need sort of tea and sympathy as well and you know any ideas for practical strategies for how to support children to calm um, before they get to school and that kind of thing can be really really super helpful as well but the key thing for us was about finding that routine wasn't it finding those yeah. people and places of safety um, and being prepared to kind of stick at it and trying to make sure that you have positive experiences yeah so that's it we I talked recently on my YouTube channel about I can cycles which is about finding out the things you can do even if they're really little um, and then building on those. So, so yeah, I think that's... Have you got any other final thoughts you would want to lodge at this point? Um, I don't think so. No? Okay. There'll be other opportunities. Lyra always wants to help. So um, many of you will be watching uh, who've been engaging with our new online learning. Uh, and uh, we are Creative Education or a family business set up by my mother-in-law uh, many years ago. Um, and I recently returned to the family business to work alongside my husband uh, because my mother-in-law just turned 70, in fact, didn't she? So we yeah. all live together. Um, and she just thought she might like to spend more time knitting and playing with our many dogs uh, rather than running a company, which is fair <laughs> enough. So I returned and then the pandemic happened um, which was challenging for face-to-face -face training so Lyra has been sort of during lockdown um, and beyond and lockdown too now she's been with us every step of the way as we've been developing the new website and putting it all together and actually you've done some um, some work for us haven't you um, but um, you you have a future you you have a future aim don't you what what job is it you want to do in the business I want to be the accountant. Yeah, Lyra wants to be the accountant. You love maths, don't you? So that's her That's her aim. So we're, we're hoping, and you guys can all help with this, we're hoping to keep the uh, family business going long enough that Lyra and uh, her sister, if she chooses, actually have something to inherit and Lyra has some accounting to do. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Lyra's been uh, really interested in all the work we've been doing and all the online. And every now and then she saved me uh, during Zooms that have gone wrong and things like that, haven't you? Been yeah. uh, the tech help. So yeah, thank you for everyone who's who has tuned in today. And um, now we know Facebook Live works, technically yes. works. We will try and do more. Um, I'm gonna schedule a chat um, for the 12th of November. I think I, it looked clear in my diary um, about anxiety. And uh, I'll put a link out in our email for people to submit questions ahead. And we'll take questions on the day um, if we have them. And here we go, Lyra, you've got a lovely comment here from Katie Truby, who says, it's so wonderful to hear uh, from a child. So beautifully spoken, thank you. Sharon says, thank you for sharing. I'll show this to my daughter um, and my granddaughter or goddaughter is autistic and it's a trial and error finding the right way for the child every day is different um, and what a lovely young lady 
Um, Rachel, thanks, Lyra. It's insightful to hear things from a young person's perspective. I'm going to ask my daughter to watch. Um, and um, Lizanne saying, love this. So thank you so much for Lyra. And I just have to say, I, Lyra specifically said, what are you doing? Can I help? It wasn't, I, I sometimes worry, like child labour, it's not appropriate. But actually, you, you specifically wanted to, yeah. to be involved, didn't you? So thank you, Lyra. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye, everyone. See you next time.